are sitting in your very fancy office in Sofia Antipolis in an afternoon, rainy and sunny, fantastic weather. You have been re-elected in last spring uh, for the next five years. So um, our audience would like to know from you what are the main topics within your vision and strategy uh, for the next five years? Well, to start with, uh, I think it's, it's, it's been a pleasure being re-elected because it, this shows that uh, in Etsy, we've been doing things the right way. I think uh, what's to come to us is, is quite challenging. Uh, the first idea that is in our mind is, of course, keeping the center of gravity of, of ICT. And, and this, I think, we are, we are achieving, but uh, we, we need to keep on being there, so at, at the core, at the center of, of, of digital. Uh, then to, to achieve that, uh, we need to empower keep on empowering our people. So it's, it's a lot of, of efforts that we will put in empowering our people, in getting the right tools that enable new processes, that enable new ways of doing standards. So that's, let's say, a kind of a second big, big topic. The third one uh, is interesting because uh, we have a membership that's very varied of industry, of operators, of academia, of governments. And we need to put a little bit more uh, emphasis or focus on this latter because we've, we've uh, sensed that there's a little bit of more disconnect so we will put more emphasis on, on our government and particularly on, on the European Commission because we have a, as you know a very close relationship with them and we need to, to nurture this, this relationship. Yeah, let's um, stay with that relationship to all these members. So Seagos belongs to mid-sized uh, enterprise companies and they are also smaller uh, companies um, uh, as a member of Etsy. What's the role of, of all these companies for you? In fact, uh, it's, it's a very important role uh, because uh, despite the fact that many say, oh, Etsy is the place of the big guys, uh, not at all. Uh, in Etsy, it's, it's very interesting saying how uh, more than 20% of membership is SMEs, or so small and medium enterprises. And what's more interesting is that when it comes to uh, important and, and relevant positions in the different working groups and technical committees, 40% uh, of those positions are being held by people coming from small and medium enter enterprises, which means a lot of brains come from these enterprises, new ideas, initiatives, and it's excellent because we help them and they help us. Uh, they help us being with us, growing the community, growing uh, the interest in our, in our subjects. And we help them, giving them more visibility, connections to the rest of the, of the companies, networking possibilities. So it's, it's a very nice symbiosis, if I may say. So SMEs are, are very much at the core of what we do. Oh, great. You, you have mentioned um, also um, the importance of digitization. So uh, while everyone talks about digital transformation in not only in telecommunications, also in an enterprise, especially in the enterprise world, what could be the role of Etsy within the next years in, within that scope of digital transformation? Well, uh, digitalization to us, it's, it's how the different sectors are going to take on board ICT information and communication technologies. Uh, if Etsy wants to be at the heart of these information and communication technologies, then we will see how we take more and more preeminent role in, in bridging and, and making possible this digitalization. I think it's very important that we are able to bring all these different sectors together and, and together with the ICT sector and that we learn their ways and we learn what their requirements, their real requirements are and bring them inside Etsy and that we can work all together. So it, through this networking, I think it's, it's how Etsy can help to this digitalization. Um, are you involving in, in the work of Etsy also the enterprise companies besides the telecommunications too? Uh, we, we are and, and we could see that many different sectors are already being part of the Etsy community. We can see uh, the automotive sector, of course, represented by many companies coming from uh, the automotion. But we can see agriculture, uh, we can see e-health, so uh, we can see manufacturing. So there are, there are many, many different uh, sectors that are already being part of, of the community. The point to us is now how we 
are a little bit more uh, relevant to those sectors and how are uh, we a little bit more known and trusted and that they are joining a little bit uh, uh, with, with uh, let's say, uh, more footprint, more companies around and with uh, more clear objectives. I see. Um, you know, besides the digitization, there are a lot of expectations regarding the productivity in the life. And one of the keywords is automatization. So, um, automatization in the enterprise world, automatization in the networks. Let's uh, be focused on, on, on networks, uh, so self-optimized networks. So, what could be the role of Etsy to push uh, the automatization within the networks, uh, within the upcoming uh, new generations like 5G? In, in fact, it's, it's an important question because uh, we believe that all these new, very complex networks coming will be absolutely unmanageable if you don't have some kind of, well, a big part of, of automatization on, 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 on the management and, and maintenance of, of all these networks. So all these uh, self-healing, self-operating, self-everything networks. Uh, if we have this 5G coming with all these uh, features and all these new ways of doing and all these uh, huge possibilities, if we are not able to manage those, we will lose all the pot potentiality and all the, all the power of the networks. So it will be core to, to uh, enabling the future 5G services and the future 5G networks. Um, in Etsy we already have groups that are looking at that, uh, at automation at, at different levels and different components, uh, using, again, uh, we've heard about it, uh, using uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, technologies or capabilities. And this, this is just the start because uh, we believe this will grow and impact in the work that 3GPP is doing and impact in, in everything we will be doing on, a, on other kind of, of technologies. I am obviously we are in a starting time, a starting phase of automatization, but with a real focus of Etsy in a cooperation with, um, let's say, telecommunication sector as well as an enterprise. This is uh, nicer to hear because there are big expe expectations. Um, if you go through several exhibition, exhibitions um, in telecommunications, you see um, what we detect and what we uh, monitor is many companies, many vendors, they um, claim the, the wording of service assurance and then to, with the messages they have some solutions, they look for service assurance. And since uh, Seagos is in that business for 30 years already, so we are a little bit surprised uh, about this big attention on uh, service assurance. So is there a big market with service assurance or are the people so worried about service quality within the complexity of new generations of networks? In fact, uh, service assurance is going to become uh, the, the condition uh, sine qua non. That's to say, today uh, we've, we've experienced networks that uh, roughly have been designed for the mass market. We wanted them to really work, which they did. And if at some point in time you didn't have the kind of service you expected, it was not critical. Now, when we start doing the jump into 5G, but even more, even uh, 4G, when, when we go to emergency services and, and giving protection to the world, uh, you, you cannot allow that service simply fails. So when it comes to 5G, it's not just serving, servicing the mass market, but it's servicing many different sectors. It's, it's servicing businesses. So how long uh, do we expect networks or, or the service not being able to be up and running in the proper way uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, cannot happen, so th that's why uh, service assurance will be a, an important component in the way in which we deploy services in, in all these new networks. Of course, if, we, if you go to emergency and critical communications, 
that, that's even more of a must, right? But not only that, even, even to give service to uh, many different sectors and, and protect and, and support their, their businesses, if we want them to trust these technologies, you need, you, you need to definitely uh, assure the service. Yeah. Obviously, for increasing and achieving high quality of services, you need standards uh, for interconnections uh, between networks, between several players in, in the networks. Uh, but on the other side, the uh, over-the-top uh, players and, and also the enterprise market, they uh, have the feeling they are blocked by standardization. How you get this balance between standardization and uh, giving more flexibility? Uh, I like that because all these players that complain about standardization because they are over the top of a standardized solution, which is good to start with. So, uh, in fact, uh, you, you need to standardize to a certain level so that you ensure that the basics are solid and then you can build and in innovate and, and create on top of that. If, if you would like to create a service over the top and the top being, uh, or, or the bottom of that being nothing, probably you, you will have nothing, right, over the top. So, so uh, the, in fact, uh, what these new technologies will, will enable at the end of the day is uh, that all, there will be much more flexibility to build on top of the services being provided, for which you need to have very solid standardized uh, interfaces and very solid and standardized plugins so that people can run and, and put over the top services with certain also uh, levels of quality that probably today are, are not there to serve the, the, the customer. So um, is 5G um, a dream of all of us uh, where we expect a big success worldwide uh, with a nice contribution to GDP, growing the GDP, growing the economies and etc. and growing the values uh, for the human society. Is that a dream or is that becoming a reality? Uh, as, I think as every technology and as, as every new generation, it's always been a dream and it always, always starts with a dream. And, and it's now becoming a reality. We, we start seeing deployments and we will see uh, in 5G, I think, as, as we have seen with all previous generations, we will see how we evolve as time goes by. Uh, again, the foundations, which are, which are the working standards, are set. And now it's about all our clever members to keep on deploying and, and developing all these technologies and putting those to the marketplace. What we have also experienced uh, throughout the years is how each time you, you come with a new generation, with new features, with new capabilities, market has taken that because market knows what they want when they see it. And, and we will see therefore how uh, these new technologies so all encompassing will be really uh, uptaken in the marketplace and, uh, and being serving, uh, I think that's the most important thing, not, not just the mass market, but, but serving many, many other sectors that are already longing for these capabilities in the, in the technology. So, thanks so much for this interview. Thank you very much.